Hello viewers, welcome to Dr. Jerry's physics lecture series. Today we'll be looking at physical quantities from which we'll study units and dimensions. So the first thing we're we'll going to look at physical quantities. which are divided into the fundamental quantities and derived quantities. In this lecture series, we are going to focus on just three fundamental quantities. First and foremost, what are physical quantities? Physical quantities are quantities that help us to describe physical phenomena occurring within our environment or our universe. So we can say physical quantities are quantities that help us To describe, to describe physical phenomena within our universe. Samples of physical quantities include velocity, we have velocity, we have speed, we have force, etc. Now, these physical quantities are segregated into two broad categories. Either we have the fundamental quantities or we have the derived quantities. Fundamental quantities Fundamental quantities, these are independent quantities. These are independent quantities. Independent physical quantities. When we say they are independent, it implies that they don't depend on other physical quantities. Rather, they are the basic quantities. Why other quantities depend on them? Examples of fundamental quantities are length. We have length, we have mass, we have time, we have fine. thermodynamic temperature, we have current, we have amount of substance. And we have the luminous intensity. There are seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of them. But in this lecture series, this particular one, we will focus on just the first three, length, mass, and time. So, in terms of the derived units, derived quantities rather, derived quantities are quantities that are dependent on the fundamental quantities. That are dependent on the fundamental quantities. F 
for derived quantities for derived quantities they cannot stand on their own they are not independent they are combined by either one or more fundamental quantities example is area area is a combination of length and length you know area is length times breadth but they are both measurement of length so length times length for volume is combination of length 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 if you talk about uh, velocity velocity is a derived quantity you combine displacement and time to get velocity speed you combine distance and time to get speed so all these quantities are called derived quantities why because you obtain them by combining one or more fundamental quantities now having understood what these quantities mean let us look at how we can differentiate these quantities together so that takes us to units units you may want to know what are units units are simply standards for measuring physical quantity they are standards for measuring physical quantities examples of units include meters we have meters per second and so on and so forth these are units for measuring physical quantities meters is for measuring length meter per second is for the measurement of velocity or speed these units can also be segregated or defined separated into two categories just the way we have the physical quantities we have the fundamental units and we have the derived units the fundamental units they are up they, they are the standards for measuring fundamental quantities so fundamental units are standards for measuring fundamental quantities fundamental quantities while the derived units are the standards for the measurement of derived quantities derived units are the standards for measurement of derived quantities so having understood this we will now go into dimensions because there is a correlation between units and dimensions so what is dimension i'm going to wipe this off then we'll talk about dimension so we have dimension dimension is actually a term that is used to describe 
the correlation, the relationship between different physical quantities. It helps us to connect different physical quantities together. Some functions of dimension is that you can use dimension, it can be used to obtain relationships between different physical quantities. We can also use dimension to check to check the accuracy of equations. We can use dimension to check if an equation is correct or not use it to obtain relationships between different physical quantities. You can use dimension to find, to achieve a number of things in physics. Now, if you have the fundamental quantities, for example, how do you obtain their dimensions? How do you obtain their dimensions? Like I said, for this particular lecture, we are going to focus on the first three. Thereafter, in the subsequent lectures, we can consider the other remaining four. So, in terms of length, mass, and time, the fundamental, the dimensions of these fundamental quantities are respectively their first letters. So for length, the dimension is L. For mass, the dimension is N. And for time, the dimension is T. Simply take the first letters. So with this, you can express dimensions of every other physical quantity in terms of this. You also have to take note that trigonometric functions are dimensionless. So you have to note that trigonometric functions are dimensionless. Constants are dimensionless. When we say they are dimensionless, it implies they don't have dimensions. Also, numbers E.g., say one, two, three, and so on and so forth, including fractions, are dimensionless. So, these are some of the areas or aspects you need to know about dimensions. So, in our subsequent lectures, we are going to look at the dimensions of different physical quantities force, momentum, and so on and so forth. We're going to look at all their dimensions in this manner. Then, in subsequent lectures also, we're going to study how to check if an equation is dimensionally correct or not. We'll also check the to see how we can use dimensions to obtain a relationship between different physical quantities. So for now, we are wrapping it up this lecture. In the subsequent lectures, we are going to take more 
on dimensions. Thank you.